Hi, we're here with Ahmed Youssef. He's the recipient of the Jacobs Graduate Student Council Award for the month of March. Mr. Youssef is a researcher at the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department, and he's currently working on alternative, alternative computer technologies. Can you tell us a little bit what you're working on? on sure. Um, so currently I work on developing um, alternative computing technologies in the context of uh, artificial intelligence. Um, so you can think of AI as a broad category of uh, computing systems that are capable of uh, learning from data uh, based on some advanced machine learning algorithms. And in particular, we focus on uh, neural networks. Um, and neural networks are, you know, they are highly structured computing systems uh, that are vaguely inspired by uh, biological neural networks that um, constitute our brains. Um, so the building unit of a neural network is called neuron, and you can think of it as a um, simple computing element. By adding multiple of these neurons, you form one layer, and adding multiple layers, you form the, this whole network of neuron nets. Um, so it turned out that uh, this structure is very good in learning um, uh, highly complex functions. Uh, however, it's not optimized yet. So the problem comes when you try to deploy such uh, networks in uh, mobile platforms or embedded devices in general uh, because they are very compute intense and they require uh, a large data storage to be able to perform the target uh, processing. Um, so in our lab, we try to come up with um, optimization techniques that enable uh, compression of such networks, try to reduce the number of units used, the um, number of layers, so basically optimizing the structure uh, without uh, compromising the accuracy. Um, also, we try things like quantization, uh, which basically means reducing the, rep the required representation for the parameters used in the network to do the target task. Uh, so by doing uh, such things, you basically uh, um, reduce the required computational operations. Uh, also, you reduce the model size for such networks. So um, eventually you enable them to be uh, more feasible to be deployed on mobile platforms. Um, and the, the applications of such networks you know, um, varies from uh, computer vision, such as image classification um, and detection, uh, speech recognition, surveillance, um, robotics, even medical sector. Uh, so, and you know, there is, for all these applications, there is a lot of reasons that motivate uh, deploying these uh, networks or these processing engines on uh, the mobile device instead of doing the processing on th in the cloud. Uh, things such as privacy issues or latency issues uh, for applications that uh, you know, require real-time processing. So, and we try to, uh, we target this from both the algorithmic point of view uh, by formulating uh, optimization uh, uh, techniques and also from the implementation point of view in terms of hardware that once we get this optimized algorithms and networks how are we going to implement them in terms of hardware well it seems a very interesting topic i think uh, the future of will be more and more related everyday life with artificial intelligence and these neural networks well apart from uh, your research you were nominated in part due to your uh, highly regarded teacher assistant. Can you tell us uh, what's your philosophy of teaching or how can you reach the students to think so highly of you? Um, so, um, um, I believe, like in my opinion, I believe there are two main things uh, or two main goals uh, for students coming to school. Uh, the first one is uh, learning the fundamentals of their um, measures the second one is learning how to learn on their own. Um, so, you know, and this is a very important quality that students need to develop. Um, 
and you know it comprises a set of problem solving skills troubleshooting and uh, analytical thinking and um, you know from like and it actually has doesn't have much to do with how smart the student is but it's more like a quality that really every student needs to de develop in school um, so from my experience I always observe a spectrum of students that uh, from students that rarely ask you a question, it's just they try to explore things on their own and figure out uh, how to solve their problems and to students that are very frequently asking questions and they basically they didn't have a chance to develop such quality uh, and uh, they are just you know, less patient to explore things on their own or maybe less confident. Uh, so. Uh, I always try to like convey a basic engineering principles that enable them to develop such quality. Uh, so for example, one of the most important uh, engineering principles is divide and conquer. Uh, so whenever you uh, solve a problem or build a system, uh, you have to like divide your problems or divide, break down your problem into a simpler sub problems and tackle each sub problem separately until you spot the uh, root cause of the problem also or even if you're building a system you need to divide your target uh, into uh, smaller stages and try to build uh, one step at a time or incrementally approach the target task um, so uh, so usually whenever a student uh, requires some help instead of me just silently figuring out the problem and solving for him uh, I try to engage him in the solving process so that he can observe how we approach the problem and also uh, like I try to just give him hints instead of just you know pointing to the problem directly so that I give him a chance to figure out the problem on his own um, so and at the end if he managed to find out the problem and solve it although I already helped him a little bit but uh, he came up with the solution and this basically develops uh, you know some sense of accomplishment at the student and inside the student and uh, it also builds up confidence uh, that he can uh, explore things and solve things on his own and become you know, become less dependent on others. Um, so, yeah, so this is one of the, like, I think important things that I always try to encourage them and help them develop this. Thanks, uh, you seem like a very inspiring PA. I would like to have you as my Thank PA. You. But of course, uh, we're now uh, talking about teaching grad students. We have problem, we don't have enough people getting into this kind of high-tech STEM areas. Uh, what do you think we can do to inspire the new generation of scientists to get into this, tackle these complex problems? Um, so we, we usually try to participate in events and programs that you know, target um, general audience. Uh, like for example, the UCSD Research Expo. So, you know, it targets uh, a spectrum of people from, uh, people from industry, people from uh, just alumni or undergrad or even graduate students from different departments. So it's, it's usually a very good opportunity to interact with different people and uh, exchange ideas and introduce each other research. Um, another direction is we also try to participate with programs that uh, engage uh, high school students uh, trying to inspire them towards uh, science and engineering uh, and we collaborated to set up a tour for uh, high school students to visit our lab and introduce them to the facilities and you know interact with senior students to give them uh, some idea about their research and uh, in general science and engineering disciplines. Um, and we actually try to prepare like a demo for the students and um, they actually ask the very good questions that I didn't even imagine that they might ask. Uh, so yeah, I feel like it's, uh, uh, it leaves a very special experience for the students and it certainly motivates them towards um, like 
the research in science and engineering in, in broadly. And um, yeah, I encourage, like, I think we should encourage each other to participate more in such events. Well, thank you, Fed. Uh, you are really uh, making a difference, making change here in the Jacobs community. And congratulations on all your hard work and outreach and teaching experience. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks very much yeah, for your time.